Hi students, hope all of you are doing well. Today we will be starting the Birch Algorithm of Module 6. In the previous slide we have discussed about the Hierarchical Clustering Algorithm. Today we will be discussing about the Birch Algorithm. Moving to the definition. Birch is balanced iterative reducing and clustering using hierarchies. That is, it is an unsupervised data mining algorithm used to perform the hierarchical clustering over particularly large data set. So, what is a cluster? It is, an, it is a closed packed group or it is a collection of data objects that are similar to one another and treated collectively as a group. So, this data clustering involves the partitioning of data set into clusters. There are two problems arising when we perform data clustering. That is, the data set is too large to fit in the main memory. And the second is IO operation cost. That is, the seek time on disk are orders of magnitude higher than RAM access time. So, the main advantages of this Birch algorithm resides in the reduction of this IO cost. That is, IO cost is linear in the size of data set. There are two solutions to this data clustering rather than this birch. First one is a probability based clustering algorithm, for example, Cobweb, and the second is distance based clustering algorithm, for example, K means and K medoid. The main advantages of the birch algorithm are first one is it is local in that each clustering decision is made without scanning all data points and currently existing clusters. Second is it exploits the observation that data space is not uniformly occupied and not every data point is equally important. And it makes full use of available memory to derive the finest possible subclusters while minimizing the IO cost. It is also incremental method that does not require the whole data set in advance. These are the main advantages of Birch algorithm. Next is hierarchical clustering. That is, we already know that the concept of hierarchical clustering. First, we have two data points. They are merged together to form cluster 1. Then the data point 3 is merged together to form cluster 2. And this data point and cluster 1 merged together to form cluster 2. Then we can see that uh, the right portion, there are two data points. They are close to each other to form cluster 3. Then cluster 2 and 3 are merged together to form cluster 4. This is actually the concept of hierarch hierarchical clustering algorithm that we have already discussed that is this algorithm starts with a single data point that is each point is considered as a cluster then we will be grouping the closest points into separate clusters and this procedure is continued until we get a single cluster and the complexity of this hierarchical clustering is because of n square then moving to the concept of Birch algorithm, this Birch algorithm builds a clustering feature tree, CF tree, while scanning the data set. And each entry in the CF tree represents a cluster of objects and it is characterized by a triplet, that is N, LS and SS. We have an n dimensional data points in a cluster xi where i equal to 1 2 3 etc up to n then the cf vector is defined as a triplet cf equal to n ls and ss where n is the number of data points in the cluster ls is the linear sum of n data points ss is the square sum of n data points this is the definition of cf then this CF tree is a height balance tree which contains two important parameters. First is a branching factor B and the second one is threshold. That is, this threshold is determined by the splitting criteria of each node in the CF tree. Then each non-leaf node contains at most B entries of the form CFI, child I, where child I is a pointer to the ith child node and CFI is the CF of subcluster represented by this child. So a non-leaf node represents a cluster made up of all subclusters represented by its entries.
Next, the CF tree. This leaf node contains at most L entries. Each of them is of the form CFI, where I equal to 1, 2, etc. up to L. And this leaf node contains two pointers, previous and next, which are used to chain all the leaf nodes together for efficient scanning. A leaf node also represents a cluster made up of subclusters represented by its entries. And all the entries in the leaf node has to satisfy a threshold requirement with respect to the threshold value T, that is the diameter or radius should be less than the threshold value. This is an example of a CF tree. We can see that in the figure there is a root node containing CF1 cluster feature. Then it points to non-leaf node containing B entries that is CF1, CF2 etc. up to CFB. Then it points to each non-leaf node points to a leaf node. Leaf node contain L entries each containing clustering features CF1, CF2 etc. up to CFL. This is an example of a CF tree. Then this CF tree, the tree size is a function of T. That is when the value of T becomes larger, then the size of the tree becomes smaller. We require a node to fit in a page of size P. B and L are determined by P and P can be varied for the performance tuning. And the main advantages of this CF tree is that it is a very compact representation of data set. That is, each entry in the leaf node is not a single data point, but a subcluster. This is the main difference compared to the hierarchical clustering algorithm. That is, in hierarchical clustering, we will be treating each point as a single cluster. But here in Bits algorithm, we will be considering the subclusters. This is the main difference and this cf tree contains leaf containing actual clusters and the size of any cluster in a leaf is not larger than tree then moving to the birch algorithm we have the input d equal to t1 t2 etc up to tn containing the set of items t is the threshold for a cf tree construction and we will be getting the output as k set of clusters this uh, birch algorithm proceed as follows that is Considering each data point TI element of D, do determine correct leaf node for TI insertion. That is, the closest point TI will be allocating to the closest point. So, first we have to check the threshold condition. If it is not violated, then we will be adding TI to the cluster and updating the CF triplets. Then, else, if the room to insert TI, then we will be inserting TI as a single cluster and update the CF triplet. Otherwise, we will be splitting the leaf node and redistributing the CF features. So, we will uh, you, you can understand it more detail in the uh, example below. That is, consider, we, we can see that initially we have only one data point in one cluster. That is, only one point A. And we will be labeling it as root. We, we will be allocating this A to the this point to the this cluster now a new data point arrives then we will be checking is a checking is made whether the size of the cluster does not exceed the threshold value if this condition is satisfied then we will be allocating the second data point to this node a then if the cluster size grows too big then we will be splitting the cluster into two subclusters and the points are redistributed. We can see that uh, initially we have only two points we will be allocating these two points to cluster A but we can see that uh, the data point B which is further away from the data points in the clusters A so we will be allocating this data point B into a single separate subcluster and we have two subclusters this is an example of a Birch algorithm. Now, in detail, at each node of the tree, the CF tree will be keeping track of the following information. First is the mean value of cluster, and the second one is the mean of the sum of squares to compute the size of clusters efficiently. These are the points to be tracked. Next is in the algorithm in detail. We can see that initially we have three subclusters LN1, LN2, and LN3. LN1 contains subclusters 1, 2, and 3 initially. They are denoted as blue. 
then ln2 contains two subclusters sc4 and 5 then ln3 contains two subclusters sc6 and sc7 consider a scenario that a new subcluster sc8 comes we can see in the figure that is it is denoted using an yellow circle we can see that sc8 is closer to sc1 sc2 and sc3 so what we have to do we have to insert this sc8 into ln1 clusters we can this is actually we have to done but we can see that uh, the threshold size if we set the threshold size at 2 that is ln1 contains here we can see that ln1 contains 4 subclusters and it is 2 the size of ln1 is too large to fit so what we have to do in such a scenario we have to split ln1 into two subclusters ln1 dash and ln2 dash where ln1 dash contains subclusters sc8 and sc1 and ln1 double dash contains subclusters sc2 and sc3 similarly ln2 contains sc4 and sc5 initially as the same case and ln3 also contains sc6 and sc7 this is the main this is the uh, functioning of birth algorithm this is another example of uh, Birch algorithm that is the CF tree size increases by 1 and will be splitting the root that is the height of the CF tree increases by 1. This Birch algorithm has five, four important phases that is in phase 1 we will be scanning all the databases all the data points and building an initial in memory CF tree using this given amount of memory and recycling the space on disk this is phase 1. In phase 2 we will be rebuilding the tree and condensing this CF tree into a smaller one. In phase 3, we will be performing a global clustering. In phase 4, the cluster re refining is done. That is optional and it requires more passes over the data to refine the results. Phase 1 in detail, initially we will be starting with initial threshold value, scanning the data, inserting the points into the tree. If it runs out of memory before it finishes scanning the data, then we, ha we have to increase the threshold value and rebuild a new smaller CF tree. This is done by reinserting the leaf entries from the older tree and then resuming the scanning of data from the point at which it was interrupted. And good initial threshold is important but it is very hard to figure out and when rebuilding a tree we have to remove the outliers or noise present this is phase one of birch algorithm moving to phase two this is optional part that is preparation of phase three potentially there is a gap between the size of phase one result and input range of phase three so it scans the leaf entries in the initial cf tree to rebuild a smaller cf tree while re removing more outliers and grouping the crowded subclusters into larger ones. Moving to phase 3, there are two important problems arising after we perform phase 1. That is, the input order affects result and splitting triggered by the node size. In phase 3, we will be using a global or semi-global algorithm to cluster all the leaf entries. That is, we can either perform this agglomerative hierarchical clustering algorithm in the subclusters represented by their CF vectors. Moving to phase 4, it is optional, that is additional passes over the data to correct the inaccuracy and refine the clusters further. It uses centroid of clusters produced by phase 3 at seed and redistribute the data points to its closest seed to obtain a new set of clusters and it converges to a minimum value. And there is also an option of discarding the outliers. The main advantages of this Birch algorithm is that it performs faster compared to k-means on large data set. That is when the size of data set increases, the commonly used algorithm is Birch. And it scans the whole data exactly once. That is, there is no repeated scanning of data in Birch algorithm. And it handles noise better or outliers better compared to other algorithms. And it is superior to other algorithms in terms of stability and scalability. Then moving to disadvantages. Since each node in the CF tree can hold only a limited number of entries due to the size, a CF tree node does not always correspond to what a user may consider a nature cluster. Moreover, if the clusters are not spherical in shape, it does not perform well. That is, it does 
it uses the notion of radius or diameter to control the boundary of clusters. These are the main advantages and disadvantages of birth cell gartha. Thank you for your attention. Hope all of you understand the BIRTS algorithm. Then uh, the next DB scan and optics algorithm will be discussed in the coming videos. Thank you.